Well, hello, friend. It's Miss Christina over at the Corona Public Library, bringing another preschool story time. Today, we're going to be doing Halloween. Okay, it's time for a story. The Problem with Pumpkins by Barney Salzberg. Chapter one, getting ready. A week before Halloween, Hip and Hop went to buy supplies to make their costumes. I can't wait for Halloween, said Hop. I'm going to be a pumpkin. I'm going to be a pumpkin too, said Hip. I said it first, you have to pick something else. But I really want to be a pumpkin, said Hip. Too bad, said Hop. Well, that's not fair, grumbled Hip. At the store, Hop bought orange satin, green felt, and black paint. Hip, said Hop, shouldn't you be buying supplies too? I want to be a pumpkin, said Hip. Pumpkins are perfect. They're round, they're orange, they're Halloween-y. And that's what I want to be. You could be a bat, said Hop. Bats are Halloweeny. I don't like bats, said Hip. What about a witch? said Hop. Witches are very Halloweeny. No, I was a witch last year. I want to be a pumpkin. How about a pirate? said Hop. If you're a pirate, I'll give you every green M&M I get from trick-or-treating. I love green M&Ms, said Hip. Okay, if you give me all the green M&Ms, and I get to pick both of our costumes next year? Deal, said Hop. Why are you buying the same things as me? asked Hop. Because I'm going to be an orange and green pirate with a black beard. Back at his house, Hop crunched old newspapers to stuff his pumpkin suit. Hip crunched old newspapers too. Stop copying me. I'm not, said Hip. Pirates have big bellies. Hop sewed an orange satin pumpkin body and painted a big smiling jack-o'-lantern face on the front. Hip practiced painting her beard. Hop made a green felt stem hat for his costume. I wish I had a hat like that. Pirates don't wear hats like this, said Hop. I know, said Hip. Only pumpkins are lucky enough to have a nice little green hat like the one you're going to wear, and I'm not. Hip practiced being a pirate. Reading would be much easier if I were a pumpkin, she said, sighing. On Halloween day, Hip and Hop decorated their houses. Does that cloud look like a pumpkin to you? asked Hip. No, said Hop. It looks like a storm is coming. Oh no, I think I heard thunder, said Hop. Well, maybe it won't rain, said Hip. It is raining, cried Hop. I, it can't rain on Halloween. Nobody goes trick-or-treating in the rain. Halloween will be a disaster. Outside it rained and inside Hop sulked all afternoon. Hip hated seeing Hop so upset. Finally, she said, I'll be right back. One whiff of this candy and nobody will care that it's raining. We'll have trick-or-treaters here in no time. Hip and Hop waited, but no one came. Hip had another idea. She played scary music to attract trick-or-treaters. Well, this would have worked if the thunder wasn't making so much noise, said Hip. Nobody's coming. Hop. I told you, Halloween would be a disaster. Hip ran back home. A few minutes later, a ghost knocked on Hop's door. Hop smiled for the first time all afternoon. Haven't I seen you before? Of course. I mean, no. I mean, boo! Said the ghost. Look, the rain stopped, shouted Hop. Hey, Hip, said Hop. 
let's leave the candy in a bowl by the door and go trick-or-treating ourselves. Great idea, but how did you know it was me? You're my best friend. Besides, I know what your sheets look like. Chapter three, trick or treat. Hop put on his pumpkin suit and his pumpkin hat. Did I mention that I, Hip, your best friend, would really rather be a pumpkin more than anything else in the world? Yes, said Hop, but I'm going to be the pumpkin and you're going to be, or you're going to get all of my green M&Ms. Fine. Hip put on her pirate costume. I look terrible. I bet it would help if you put on your eye patch, suggested Hop, but they couldn't find it anywhere. It's okay, said Hip. I don't want to be a pirate anyway. But Hip, cried Hop, you've been practicing to be a pirate all week. But I never really wanted to be a pirate, said Hip. Wait, 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 said Hop. There must be something else you could be. I could draw windows on this box and you could be a skyscraper, Hop said. It's too stuffy in here, said Hip. You could be a red snapper fish and all you have to do is wear red and snap your fingers, suggested Hop. I don't know how to snap my fingers. We could paint the egg cartons green and you could be an alligator, said Hop. No, said Hip. I want to be a pumpkin. It's the only thing I want to be. But I am the pumpkin. Well, you're not my boss. If I can't be a pumpkin, I'm going home. You can trick or treat by yourself, said Hip. Hip stomped home and flopped on the floor. This is the worst Halloween I've ever had, she thought. I don't get to be a pumpkin, and now I'm not even going to get any green M&Ms. After a little while, Hip heard a knock on her door. I'm terribly sorry, she called. I don't have any candy. I'm not supposed to be here. I really should be out trick-or-treating. It's me. I'm not here for the candy. I'd rather we were both pumpkins than trick-or-treat all by myself. Hop pushed open the door all the way. And there, sitting on the front step, was a big pumpkin suit. It's for you, said Hop. Hip tried on the costume. It's pretty nice, she said, but I thought we weren't supposed to wear the same thing. We're not, Hop told her. My costume is smaller than yours. Yours is bigger than mine. My pumpkin's face is happy. Your pumpkin's face is scary. Now that I'm a pumpkin, said Hip, can I still get all of your green M&Ms and pick our costumes for next year? Sure, said Hop. I'm glad we're trick-or-treating together. Me too, said Hip. I was thinking, all of those green M&Ms might get lonely being away from the other colors. Do you think I could have all your red M&Ms too? Just to make sure the green ones are happy. Of course, said Hop. There's nothing worse than lonely candy. The end. Okay, it sounds like it's time for a song and we're going to do Baby Shark. So get your little baby sharks out and here we go. Do 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 do
Job. Okay, time for a story. Scaredy Cat Splat by Rob Scott. Mom! cried Splat. There's a scary spider on my jack o' lantern. He's small and hairy with really funny eyes. Splat's voice wobbled with worry. But you're small and hairy with really funny eyes, said his mom. Splat thought for a moment, but I haven't got eight legs. If you had, maybe you'd be a scary spider too, teased his mom. Splat made a scary spider face. Splat's mom caught the spider under a glass jar. Splat looked closely at the spider. It didn't look so scary now that it was trapped. Can I take the spider to school for Halloween? We've all made jack-o'-lanterns and everyone is dressing up in costumes and Mrs. Wimple Dimple is going to tell a ghost story and there's a prize for the scariest cat and I want to be the scariest cat. So please, can I take the spider to school, please? He added without taking a breath. Okay, said his mom. Where's your Halloween costume? Asked his mom. Splat pulled a broom from the closet and sat astride. Aha, look at me. I'm a scary witch's cat, cried Splat, racing around the kitchen. You certainly are scary, said his mom. Then disaster struck. Splat tripped over his tail and with a crack, the broom handle snapped in two. His scary witch's cat costume was ruined. Now I've got nothing to wear, Splat groaned. Even Seymour couldn't console him. Splat's mom had an idea. She stuffed some old socks with scrunched up newspaper and tied them to Splat with string. There! Splat looked in the mirror and jumped back with a squeal. Oh, I scared myself, he said. He looked again, and this time he smiled. Look at me, he cried, waving his sock legs. I'm a big, scary sock spider. Splat placed his jack-o'-lantern and spider on his wagon and set off for school. On the way, he met Spike, and Spike dressed as a mummy, and Plank dressed as a skeleton. They're pretty scary, said Splat. Seymour nodded and trembled a little. But I'm scarier, said Splat. Splat made his scariest spider face and growled. Spike and Plank didn't even blink. Instead, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. Boo! cried Spike. Boo! cried Plank. Oh. Splat yelped and jumped high in the air and landed in a heap. Ah! Splat sighed. Spike and Plank are both scarier than me. Seymour nodded and trembled a little bit more. I'll never win the prize for scariest cat, said Splat. The sock spider, the skeleton, and the mummy continued on their way to school. In class, everyone showed their jack-o'-lanterns. Splat's jack-o'-lantern made everyone laugh. Aw, Splat, Splat sighed. I'll never win the prize for scariest cat. Seymour shook his head. Everyone placed flashlights in their jack-o'-lanterns and Mrs. Wimpy Dimple turned down the lights and whispered in her best ghost story voice. In the dark, dark wood, there's a dark, dark house. In the dark, dark house, there's a dark, dark room. In the dark, dark room, there's a dark, dark box. And in the box, there's a 
ghost! Mrs. Wimple Dimple cried. The class jumped with fright. Splat was so startled, his tail whipped around and sent his jack-o'-lantern spinning through the air. And what goes up must come down. Splat! Unable to see anything, Splat stumbled around the classroom. Everyone shrieked as the pumpkin head glared at them and made strange woo noises. Mrs. Wimpy Dimple turned on the lights and lifted up the wayward jack-o'-lantern. The shrieking turned to laughter as Splat fell out. Calm down, calm down, hushed Mrs. Wimpledimple. Now, class, who should win the prize for being the scariest cat? Who do you think it's going to be? Splat! They all cheered. The end. Okay, it's time for a song. We're gonna do If You're Happy and You Know It. Ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know we clap your hands. If you're happy and you know we and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know we clap your hands. If you're happy and you know we stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know we stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know we and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know we stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! All right, now we're gonna do all three. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three. If you're happy and you know and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, two or three, stop, stop, hooray! Okay, it's time for a story. Now we have Halloween Hats by Elizabeth Winthrop. Floppy hats and sloppy hats, silly hats and frilly hats, flowered hats for bees to buzz in, fussy hats from someone's cousin. That looks like a lot of fun, huh? Hats to cover up your toes. Those are socks, as everyone knows. Pinwheel hats and paper hats. Tall black hats to wear with spots. Hats for queens with diamonds bright. Hats for brides, all dressed in white. Hats for fancy race car drivers. Hats with air for deep sea divers. Big straw hats with ribbons flying. Smashed on hats for secret spying. Peekaboo hats if baby's crying. Flyaway hats with strings for a time. Hats with feathers, hats with ears. Hats to wave when someone cheers. Hats to save you when you fall. Hats to make you very tall. Big fat hats to shrink you small. Miners hats with lamps that light. Hats for guards who work at night. Hats with flaps. Hats with braids, hats for generals in parades, hats to wear across home plate, hats for hair that stick up straight. That's a lot of hats. March right in. It's Halloween night. Make a circle. Shout your name. It's time to play a switching game. What do you think the switching game is going to be? Snatch your hat right off your hair. Throw it high up in the air. Catch some other falling hat. 
put this one on instead of that. Look at all those hats. So many kinds of hats. Now skip away, be someone new. Let your hat tell you who. The end. And now it's time for a craft. Today, we're going to be making a paper plate pumpkin created by Thriving Home. And here is her website if you want to see all the other fantastic crafts she has to offer. Now, some of the supplies we're going to need are paper plates, scissors, glue, orange paint or markers or crayons, some uh, black construction paper, and if you have it, we can add glitter to our black construction paper. The first thing we want to do is to draw our jack-o'-lantern face on the inside of the plate, the side that we eat on. Next, we're going to either color or paint the back side of the plate orange to be our pumpkin. As we let that dry, if we're using glitter, now's the time to add a little bit of glue and the glitter to the black paper. Once everything is dry, we can cut out the jack-o'-lantern tracing that we had made from our pumpkin. Now we can glue the black paper onto the back of our pumpkin. And if there's any excess, go ahead and trim that off the sides. And that's it, you have a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin for Halloween. So that's all for today, but don't forget, we have a bunch of other virtual story times just waiting for you on our YouTube channel or go to cityofcorona.com backslash library for additional e-media. You can also participate in our click, park and pick up or make an appointment to browse the bookshelves yourself. See you next time.